Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. You may remember a few weeks ago, I unboxed a new 3D printer, which was the Lolzbot Mini, which I've got just here. The Lolzbot Mini's got lots of automatic functions, like automatic nozzle cleaning, bed leveling, and it's also got the new Lolzbot Hexagon Hot End, which is an all metal hot end, which goes up to 300 degrees for printing specialist materials like polycarbonate and nylon. It's also got this new PEI print surface that you don't need to prime. You can print ABS and other materials straight on it. So the only thing about the Lulzbot Mini I didn't really like is that it's just got this USB cable. So you have to have it plugged into a laptop. It's got no little LCD and SD slot like the other Lulzbot printers like the Taz's that I own. And I have those in another room printing away. So I put my G code on the SD card, take it downstairs, set the printer off and leave it. Uh, this one unfortunately needs to be attached to a USB host device, normally a laptop running Cura or Prontoface or one of the other hosts. Um, for the entire time you're printing to actually control the printer. So in this video we're going to do a modification to go and add in the functionality so this thing will print effectively tetherless. The other thing that'll be really good is to be able to monitor the prints remotely which I can't do with the other printers, perhaps through a web interface or something like that. So what we really need is a little integrated computer that we can attach running some software and then we can attach to that over a web interface go and maybe upload the files we want to print and set the printer off remotely and monitor the prints. So Lulzbot are an open source hardware company, which means that all the hardware they make is open source and all the software they use is open source as well. So all their printers are built on RepRap and all of the source for those, the hardware and the software and everything related to them is open source. So for this project, I'm going to use open source hardware and open source software. I've got two boards on the table here next to the printer. The one on the right is a Raspberry Pi and the one on the left is a BeagleBone Black. Both of these are single board computers running a Linux-like operating system and we could use either for the project. They've both got USB host ports on them. Um, unfortunately, the Raspberry Pi isn't actually open source hardware. So for this project, we're going to use the BeagleBone Black because it's in line with the ethos of Lulzbot. So the website for BeagleBones is beagleboards.org and we're going to have a look at some of the documentation on there in a moment. The board itself has Ethernet at the back here, has 5 volts for power, it also has USB power on the reverse, has a, an SD slot there for a micro SD card, although it actually has 2 gig on board to hold the operating system. Got a normal USB type A there for the host connection and a load of IO pins, so these boards are quite popular in robotics. This is the website for BeagleBoard, BeagleBoard.org. If we quickly go to Start and About Us, then there's a statement here that basically BeagleBoard is a non-profit corporation uh, which is there to provide education and promote open source software and hardware. So um, that's quite important and totally in line with what we want to do. So there's lots of good documentation on here. If we have a look at the uh, Getting Started guide, um, we can see information on various boards, there's various different varieties. The one we've got is the BeagleBone Black um, and there's um, some information here about the LEDs and other things on there. So um, my BeagleBone was actually pre-owned which is why the box is a bit bashed. So I've um, installed the default image on here so it'll run various types of Linux and there's various images you can download. Um, so there is a guide here for doing so. So if we um, have a look at the page with all of the different types of Linux you can install, mainly it's Debian um, or you can install Angstrom which is the default, which is the one that I installed. So in fact our BeagleBone Black has um, what's called an eMMC which is the internal 2 gig of memory um, and you download an image here specifically for flashing that. So you boot off the SD card and that flashes the internal memory with the default operating system. And the instructions for doing that are on here. So you download the image. Um, you need to unzip it using, they've recommended 7-zip. And then you use Image Writer for Windows. The full instructions are on the BeagleBone website here for flashing that SD card. Um, and then basically you go and put that in the SD slot and you power it on holding the user boot button. And um, it boots up. It takes about 45 minutes to flash the 
operating system onto the internal memory and once it's done all four LEDs come on and then you reset it take the SD card out and it boots up with the default install on. One tip I'll give you is to do this whole thing with the Ethernet cable plugged in and the um, BeagleBone able to get internet access with a DHCP address being served up by um, your home router or whatever it's connected to and that way this um, makes the process a lot smoother so basically it updates the time and date automatically from the internet and keeps doing so if you build it without it connected to the internet then basically it won't do so and that causes us some issues later on. To actually control the printer then we need to put some sort of software on our BeagleBone that can talk to the printer, accept the G-code files and provide us the web interface. And to do that we can use a piece of software called Octoprint, print anything from anywhere. I'm not actually going to put my printer on the internet because it's a rather dangerous thing to do but you can do if you wish. So um, Octoprint is pretty cool, um, it's open source software which is really important, um, it allows you to as I say, control your printer, monitor your prints, and so on and so forth. So, um, helpfully, there's a guide being written here on GitHub. I'll put all these links in the description to this video. Set up on BeagleBone Black running Angstrom, which is really useful because that's what we've got. And this is by user Fusil, who in fact is the creator of Octoprint. So, there's lots of other guides on Fusil's GitHub about how to do this for different platforms. So um, this isn't a Linux guide as it says, it's just a, a pure guide for the core things you need to do to run Octoprint on your BeagleBone Black. Um, so um, it's got the basic setup here. Um, first of all we need to connect to our BeagleBone. So um, the BeagleBone documentation tells you that if you plug your BeagleBone into your laptop or your computer with USB, it installs some software, it installs e um, Ethernet over USB, um, and then you can connect to um, a preset default IP address. I haven't actually bothered to do that. Um, I just built mine with it plugged into the Ethernet, then I looked on my home router to see which DHCP address had been handed out, and I'm going to connect straight to that using SSH, which is basically a secure shell. So to do that I'm using a piece of software called Putt which is um, another free piece of software and I've um, already set up my BeagleBone here with the correct IP address so I can connect here and get a terminal session so I'm going to log in as root which is the default and admin user on the BeagleBone I believe it's the only account that exists once you've built Angstrom from scratch um, the uh, default password for root is actually blank so you can just press enter and it will let you log in. Um, now root is the admin of everything for the operating system so as the guide says here um, the first thing we should do is create another user for Octoprint so we're going to do user add Octo now we're going to set the password for Octo which asks us for a password Um, if we're putting this on the internet we should really change the root password to something no one knows what it is. I'm just using this internally in the house so I'm not going to bother with that. Um, so basically we need to then log out and log back in as that user. So we'll just start um, a fresh session. This time we'll log in as Octo. Which is fine. Alright so... Um, what we can do here, um, it says that you'll need Python 2.7 and there's some things you can do to update the packages that you need. So BeagleBone and Angstrom uses this OPKG system to update things. So um, what you can actually do is uh, copy and paste these commands in. So if you um, copy them and then you right click in PuTTY, um, it'll put the commands in so you don't have to type all of this in. So first of all we change to super user which actually makes us root equivalent and then we can literally copy these lines in. So um, first of all it's updating the packages there which it pulls down from the internet um, and hopefully installs. The next one is a bunch of Python modules so it appears Octoprint is written in Python so we need all of these modules, PySerial and so on so you must copy right to the end there and we can again just copy and paste those in and that will pull those packages down from the internet. A short while later it's downloaded and configured all of those modules as we can see and now we need to exit from our super user and go back to being Octo. So um, if you want to find out which user you are you can do the command who am I? It tells us that we're now Octo. Um, so the next thing is to go and get the actual Octoprint software and this is actually kept on github so github is an open source software repository as well as a place you can put documentation and so on um, so there's a note here that the um, 
the version of Git with Angstrom doesn't probably handle SSL auth with GitHub, so the first thing is to turn off the SSL verify. So we can paste that command in. And then we can go and do a git clone, which goes and pulls down all of the Python stuff, basically the source for Octoprint from GitHub. So um, basically that clones it locally. And that takes a little while to do. Once that's done, we should have a directory called Octoprint, and we can check for that by typing ls, which is the list command, and that shows the directory there. So we need to go in there by changing directory, and Unix and Linux operating systems are case sensitive, so we need to remember to use the capital O and the capital pre on, P on Octoprint. So if we look in there now, there's a bunch of files, and we need to change back to super user and run the next line, which installs any other dependencies. So there's a note here that if that fails, um, basically with an SSL error, it might think it's because it's the year 2000. Um, and at the, at the beginning I mentioned I built my beagle bone with the ethernet cable attached because it meant that the time and date got set correctly during the build. If you build it without the ethernet cable attached and without internet access, uh, then it will go to the default date. But we can see on here if we type date, in fact it is the right date. Um, and I believe that's because I built it with internet access. Uh, the previous time I tried building it without, I got the year 2000 and it got stuck. So there are various fixes on here of how to do that. So there's a couple of lines here. We need to add the Octo user into the um, group of users that has access to the serial ports. So we can run those commands. And then according to the guide, um, as well as updating, we should be able to go and run uh, Octoprint by, by typing run. Um, I found this in fact didn't work and there's a step missing which is detailed on the main page for Octoprint, uh, which is in fact to run the Python install. So we need to run this script here as super user. So I'm still, I'm still root, so if I run this command here, which is a, a Python script called setup.py, and that should run through the entire install, uh, which is kind of important. That takes a little while, but now we can exit from being super user, and we can run octoprint with dot slash run. It takes a couple of seconds to start and then it should say that everything's running. So now if we go in a web browser and browse to the IP address of our BeagleBone uh, at port 5000, so the IP address colon 5000, we should see the Octoprint web interface loading. Uh, the very first time it gives you this massive warning saying configure access control and uh, basically I'm only using this internally as I say so I'm not going to have access control. If you're putting this anywhere near the internet then you should really put some usernames and passwords in so that people can't just go and start randomly controlling your printer over the internet. So I'm going to click on disable for now but you need to consider that decision quite carefully. Now the Octoprint web interface is running, we can connect and take control of the printer. I've plugged the Lulzbot Mini USB connector into the BeagleBone, and I found I had to reboot the BeagleBone before it would be recognised. Uh, but now I've rebooted everything, I've now got this device here in my serial port, devttyacm 0 which is the Rambo board inside the Lulzbot Mini. And I set my board rate to 115200, which seems to work quite well, so if we click on connect, maybe to hear the printer fan powering up in the background. It takes a couple of seconds and then it should connect. There we go, so now it says machine state operational. And if we go onto the control page there and maybe hit the home button, maybe hear those motors running in the background. So let's have another look at the printer. So I've got my laptop next to the printer, although I should add that my laptop is not connected to anything, it's just connected to the Wi-Fi. So um, basically now I can go and control the printer here over the Wi-Fi. So of course the USB cable from the printer is connected to my BeagleBone, that's connected to the network. So um, basically now I can control this through the web browser. So if I go and um, hit these buttons, I can move the bed around and I can move the... Um, move the z-axis and so on. So what I need to do here is put some filament in because I cut it off last time and the filament's not actually connected. So I need to go and set the temperature 
which I can do in here. So I can go and type in there uh, 230 for ABS and set it and it should start heating up. We can see that uh, temperatures got plotted in real time here, so um, it's now reached the actual temperature of 230, but we can see that the faint red line there is the target, and the darker red line is the um, actual temperature as it's ramped up. So all this is monitored on the web interface. I haven't heated up the bed, um, so it's saying it's 19 degrees, which is about right for room temperature. So now we can slice up some G-code and do some printing. I'm using the Lulzbot edition of Cura here to generate the G-code. And I'm going to use one of the examples that comes with it, which is the Open Hardware Keychain, which is quite appropriate for this video, which looks like that. So I've set my machine to the Lulzbot Mini, and I'm doing this in quick mode for normal print quality, and I'm going to set it to ABS. Um, if you have a printer plugged in with the USB directly to your laptop running Cura, uh, then you get a print button. If it's not connected, instead you get this button called Save G-Code, where we can just basically go and save that G-Code. So I'm going to save that um, somewhere on my C drive. So we'll just pop that in there. Now if we go back to our Octoprint interface, we can go to Upload. If we go and find that file, and it should upload it. And then we should be able to just click on Print and have it go away and the Lulzbot Mini automatically do everything. So I'm just going to go and click on print on that file in the queue on the Octoprint web interface. And we see the printer homing there. And then we should see the temperature rising, which it's actually doing. I don't know if you can see the graph from there, but it's starting to rise. Um, and that's because the nozzle heats up, then it auto wipes, it levels the bed, and then it goes off and prints. So we'll leave that to heat up. Looks like it's heating to 150 degrees. There it goes. So off it goes doing its uh, nozzle cleaning and now it's going to do the bed leveling. So all of this um, cleaning and leveling is driven by G-code. So provided you use the right um, slicing profile in Cura for the correct printer, then all of this functionality happens. And it doesn't matter how you deliver the G-code to the printer. So whether it's with Pronterface or it's with Cura or whether it's with Octoprint. We'll leave that do its thing. It'll heat up uh, to the correct temperature after this and then it will go off and print the part. You can see the temperature rising there on the Octoprint web interface. So that curvy red line is going up to meet the target. And that looks like it's almost there. So we should be able to see the printer is setting off and doing the print. The print is underway, you can see the beagle bone there flashing away and looking very happy. And that is essentially now controlling the printer, with the monitoring of course in the web interface. Our print is well underway, and if we have a look at the screen there, we can see the progress. So, it thinks there's 2 minutes 40 or so left, and you can see how many kilobytes it's printed of the G-code file. So that's going to finish pretty quickly. Let's just have a look at that printer. And that is the end of the print. So that appears to have printed really well. We'll let that bed cool down and we'll be able to flip it off with a knife. That's all I'm going to put in this video, just the basic functionality for Octoprint running on BeagleBone. Obviously the BeagleBone has its own Linux operating system, so there's loads more you could do, perhaps adding a webcam so you can actually monitor the prints remotely and see what's going on. So don't forget to check out my other videos for the unboxing of the Lulzbot Mini and the Lulzbot Taz 4, which I did recently.